It is the number one sports podcast in New Zealand. It's one of the most downloaded podcasts out of all podcasts. And it's run by a good old mate, Dom Harvey, who used to be a breakfast show on The Edge, as did I remember Harvey as well, mate, before you did it. Congratulations on the success that you've had so far. And welcome to the program, mate. No, it's great to be on your program, mate. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bring up old wounds. But um, I was the breakfast host on the edge for twenty years. Yeah, good point. I think you did it for like seven, seventeen minutes. <laughs> um, but, I, but for you, for you, that was one. Of, that was one of the longest jobs you had. That was it. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not joking. I got nothing. I got nothing when you start like that. <laughs> Runners only with Dom Harvey. It's called. How long have you been doing this? Um, since February. Uh, yeah, February, the, the start of this year. So it was a. Uh, it was in planning for a while because um, I'm, I'm just really passionate about running. And I know there's a lot, a lot of people that are not just, not just serious runners, but you know, people that run just for you know, their mental health benefits or whatever. So that's what it's been all about. But it's, um, I, was, I, I suffer um, imposter syndrome sometimes. And uh, this was definitely one of those cases where I was just shitting bricks about launching it, quite frankly. But it's, um, it's blown me away at how it's been received and the, the, the love and support I've had. It's been amazing. Well, look, I mean, you know, without wanting to pin in your uh, pocket, I mean, you're one of the most popular breakfast radio hosts that we've ever had. So you've got a big audience out there and you don't get popular doing the, this job of being on the radio unless actually you relate to your audience. So there's probably a hell of a lot of, of it in there. I know you've been running for a long time now. So, I mean, how, how, when did you first start? Talk us through that, how you first started getting your fat butt off and actually going for a run and how it's progressed from there. Well, you you hit the nail right on the idea. Like um, I I had a fat butt. Um, I, I think I was in my early thirties after a very hedonistic time in my twenties in Palmerston North, and um, I just I, I felt I felt gross and I looked gross and I I just didn't didn't like the person. I, I I just woke up in the morning and I never felt good and I didn't I didn't like how I felt and I didn't like the person I was. So I started running with the um, with the motivation really of just losing weight. And then um, I got quite disappointed and frustrated that it didn't happen overnight. But I mean, you can't spend ten years, you know, treating your body like a, like a, like a dumping site, and then expect you know miracles to happen overnight, can you? But then somewhere along the process, when I started running again, I just sort of, um, I, I just I fell in love with it, and I stopped fixating on my weight, and it just made me feel really good. And to be honest, it's been like a staple of my life ever since. Yeah. Yeah, I just really enjoy it. How long did it take for you to notice any body changes? Because anyone that's listening to this, look, I mean, at my age and all the people around my age, I mean, we wake up in the morning, we think exactly the same. I look in the mirror and think, good God, I've got a fat roll. I've actually got quite a couple of them now, and it never used to happen. I'm going to put my shoes on. I'm going to start jogging. And I've done this a number of times, mate, and I've even got up to four months, and then I've thought, nothing's happening. I'm not losing weight. I might put a jacket on. It doesn't. It's still in a hard to fit. You know, how, so, you know, that's the frustration of it. How long does it take before fi- finally you see some results kicking in? Oh, oh, to be honest, it was uh, it's ages, eh? Because the, I mean, you need to be running some serious, serious miles to try and outrun like a bad diet or an alcohol problem, um, which is a balance I've been trying to find over the years. But um, I mean, the lucky thing for me is, I guess, yeah, it stopped being like a, a torture act after a few months, and I actually quite enjoyed yeah, the way, it, the, yeah, just the, the feel good chemicals that I had after a run. So I stopped actually fixating on how my body looked. Yeah. Just, um, and the running itself became quite addictive. But, yeah, I mean, the reality is unless you make some serious, serious diet changes, just adding a 30-minute run to your, you know, to your day isn't going to make too much of a difference. I'm sorry. Dom Harvey with us. It's called Runners Only. So, you, you know, you, you, but you haven't got into complete psycho about this. You know, I mean, you aren't running, you know, 100 miles every day or anything like that. It's still, it's almost still recreational for you, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I probably average about ten k's a day. Actually, at the moment, I've got a knee issue, so I'm probably not the best person to be talking to right, about okay. the benefits. <laughs> um, but but it's like, like ten k's a day. If I go for a couple of days without having a run, um, I, I just I feel I, I don't know. I feel like something's something's missing in me, and something's not quite right. But I, I say to people on the podcast, like for me, it's it's running is, is where I found my um, my sort of calm and my clarity and my peace. Um, but I don't know, for, for you, maybe it's something else. But any sort of movement, any sort of exercise, um, the mental health benefits of that cannot be understated.
No, I totally agree with you. Look, and, and, you know, now you're making me motivated again. All right, so for for blokes in their 40s or 50s or, 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 or a woman of the same age in there, you, what's your recommendation? Yeah. Is is it to run by yourself? Is it to, to run with somebody else? Is it to – because you've got to set yourself targets. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed, like I was actually only doing 5Ks, and I even say that to you now, Dom, only doing 5Ks. Okay, but, mate, right. but, mate, after yeah, those 5Ks, yeah. I felt like a million bucks, mate. I really did. I'd come back home, and, and I actually felt every day that I'd achieve something. So I started doing it earlier – earlier in the day because all of a sudden it's like right I can go and do this now and do this now and do this now because I can sit on my sit on my bum and watch some TV now because I've gone out from a run oh that's um, that's first of all I want to pull you up don't ever say you've just done 5k's that's nothing to scoff at 5k's is great um, but yeah if you go out in the morning like it sets you up for the day nicely if you have a I don't know a lamington in the afternoon or whatever you're not going to feel so bad about it if you go out for a couple of pints you're not going to feel so bad about it you'll feel like you've earned it yep um, but the the thing is to whether you should run on your own or with a group, I don't know. I think you just got to do what feels right for you. I mean, for a lot of people, you know, having a running partner or a running group keeps them accountable and keeps them honest and keeps them going. Um, but for me, um, I, I prefer to be in my own space and just run on my own. Okay. For anyone that's starting out, I'd, I'd say especially dudes, just because you used to run like a 42-minute 10K when you were at school – don't think you can get the Puma shoes out of the closet that have been there for the last eight years and do it again. I'd say ease back into it. Like, get out there, run for two minutes, walk for three minutes, repeat that cycle a few times, and then slowly you'll run a bit more and walk a bit less. Yeah. But just, um, yeah, ease into it. The last thing you want to do is go out, um, get, get, get your legs all um, clogged up with lactic acid, and then be unable to move for the next five days. Okay. So who's who's downloading your podcast? Who's listening to your podcast? Is it any specific age or gender, or is it, or is it basically drift net fishing and everybody? Well, that um, to me has been you know, the, probably the huge surprise, Marty. Like, um, you know, you were saying before that I I uh, you know had a successful career on Britain. I'm massively Radio, successful, mate. Com- massively successful. Yeah. Well, I pretty appreciate that compliment, but um, I mean that's um part of the fear with this thing. It's like anyone that listened to this podcast because they listen to me on the edge. Could have been bitterly disappointed that it just wasn't, you know, fart jokes and yeah, yeah, you know, sure. talking yeah. about Ed Sheeran and yeah. the sort of shit that we did in Top 40 Radio. But um, it's um, the comments I get from people, it's, um, oh, it's been so humbling, man. It's been so, like, wide-ranging. And um, I, I, I really appreciate it. You know, it's, yeah, men and women of uh, sort of all sorts of ages. And um, just the response that, that uh, a lot of people say they get something out of it, even if they're a non-runner, it's been, um, ah, it's been, it's been really cool. Okay, and you know the next thing, of course, obviously, is you need to monetize it, like we all do, because I mean, so you're putting a product out there, you're doing it every week, and I see you've got lots of sponsors yeah. on on board and things, but you know, and you aren't charging yeah. anyone for this. I mean, there's no subscriber thing going on. You're just actually asking at the moment for numbers, aren't you? You know, that's a, it's, it's the hard thing. I sort of feel like I'm at the crossroads at the moment. Where um, you know, I'm, I I am trying to get like a big sponsor on board. Shout out to the Chemist Warehouse if you're listening. Go on. <laughs> they seem to support every, everything else. They seem to support, yeah. um, but a paywall thing, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just don't know about, about New Zealanders and their willingness to pay for content. Yeah, you're right. Um, it, it's, um, the, numbers are, the numbers are great, though, so I think um, kicking into the new year, um, I'm going to be looking more at options like that. Okay. I don't know. I, I think um, if you had a subscription model of, say, like a dollar a week or you know, $52 for the year, I feel like that's fairly reasonable, but it's just how many people would be prepared to do that. Yeah, you know, the, the 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 great thing is is that with the technology that we have and everything else, this is so accessible. You can get it on your phone. You can get it. It's just like the platform. You can get it everywhere yeah. else you're going and stuff like that. And you know, and we've actually what has really really pleased and surprised us is the amount of people that have jumped on board because. It's providing an alternative to what the mainstream media is delivering, and the mainstream media is absolutely, I think, corrupted at the moment by the fact that it takes so much money off the government to do anything that it actually is. So anyone doing anything independent at the moment, this is why I wanted to talk to you about it. It's inspiring, mate, and hopefully it inspires other people who are listening to this, go, hey, I can listen to this, I can do this. I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that we all have in us if we actually want to sit, take the time and do it. Oh, 100%. I, I think that's the great thing about, um, yeah, but podcasting, you know, in particular, like you can record it on your phone. It's not going to be very good quality, but you can record it on your phone and upload it to, um, you know, Spotify, Apple, wherever wherever you want. If you think you've got something worth saying, uh, what I would say to anyone that's looking at starting a podcast is, um, 
just you, you need to be passionate about it. You've got to see it as a hobby, and you've got to be doing it for the love. Okay. And uh, hopefully, in time, the, the money will follow. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully uh, yeah. I'm saying that on behalf of all podcasters, myself included. Yeah. Okay. So, and 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 what 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 do you want from people that are actually downloading it? I mean, you know, it's, you're actually putting yourself out there and things. And also, the sub part to that question is, how do you keep talking about running every 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 week, mate? Well, that's the um, the title is probably like a little bit misleading. It's like um, every guest I have on, we have a little bit of a, a chat about their association with running. Every every New Zealander has an association with running, even if it's a negative one, like because they were forced to do the school cross country. Yeah, right. Last. So we tick that off, um, and then we just get into a general general chat. Like some of the some of the most downloaded um, episodes I've had this year have been uh, very very little chat about running. Like um, Matthew Ridge a couple of weeks ago. We, we didn't really sort of touch upon it at all. Uh, Reese Darby, the comedian, we touched upon it sort of briefly. He likes to go for runs around the LA Hill. Um, Zach Guilford, we, well, we, we talked about running from the law, but. <laughs> <laughs> see, there's, see, that was the Edge Breakfast Show, ladies and gentlemen. The man had wit and the man had timing. Oh, look, this is brilliant, mate. And I'd like to, you know, to keep you on every week because, I mean, okay, I might start kickstarting again. I'll let you know when I do that. And if I go out for a waddle and a jog and keep going from there. But uh, anyone can download this. Anyone can have a listen to it. You've got how many episodes? You've got, what, probably dozens and dozens of episodes up at the moment. Runners only with yeah. Dom Harvey. And, and and where can people find it? Oh, wherever you get your podcast from, if you, if you even if you just Google Dom Harvey podcast, it, it should come up. But on your phone, if you've got a little podcast badge, um, you can go there and just type in Dom Harvey and you'll find it. Yeah, there's like been 30 episodes so far. So scroll through and, until you find a name you're interested in. You know, maybe it's Eric Murray. I don't know. Maybe it's Arch Jelly who turned 100 a couple yeah, of weeks brilliant. ago. Yeah, brilliant. That was coach of John Walker. Yeah. Um, find a name that you're interested in and um, you give it a listen. And yeah, I'd love to know what you think.